I'm such a drama queen, man. Yeah. That's very nice, you know. Hang five until the uh, until the truck goes by. We're back to trucks. Back to trucks. Come back. To right here they are, folks. Right, it's a Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Right, folks, um, just me, a little bit of a drama queen. Um, the um, normal procedure, the gate, it just looked that the, the chain unlinked itself. Couple of horses got out straight over the road into the other paddock. So, uh, me being a big drama queen, oh, Jilly, Jilly! Um, but it's all done. All the horses are here, all accounted for, all happy, chewing the van, kicking the van, rubbing their backsides on it, so there you go. <laughs> so, we are in the paddock, folks, a big favourite amongst so many people. Um, and they're just having a little discussion about... This is that bloke on the top of the van, he's a bleeding idiot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're all having a lot. What? Oh, isn't it? Okay, okay, stand by. Oh, that is it. Okay, I'm going to restart. Just tell me, Jilly, if you see the... Uh, it's interesting because the winds are just so calm. Yeah. <laughs> it was, wasn't it? Yeah, they were very good horses. Yeah, very good. Uh, great thing is that they are... Yeah, yeah. Planning the next escape. Look, hey George, word in your shell like, if I go left and you go to the right, then I'll, uh, I'll call it. Oh, he's looking, he's looking, he's watching, he's watching. Hold on a minute. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm not bored, but I can't be bothered, mate. <laughs> Jenny, watch the feed. I guess it's a uh, part two. I'm a big drama queen, that's what it is. It's funny, isn't it? Ooh, a bit of a sink ray on that one. Zombie Tog one to add to the blooper reel for 2024. <laughs> Nick B loves the paddock, best in his opinion. Um, you know, some will uh, agree, some will disagree. It depends on what you're looking for, really. Um, unbelievable position for windy uh, for windy arrivals, crosswind arrivals, that's for sure. But you know, yeah, it is kind of cool. The only thing, obviously, is the truck issue. But when the summer comes, I've spoken with them, um, with the owners of the field. And they're uh, more than happy for me to um, put uh, a whole load of, uh, well, not a whole load, but four 
I guess you put two ton blocks would you two ton concrete blocks with rebar hooks in them so that we can stabilize the van and I can get up higher I don't know if you folks know but I did create a whole new retrofit platform uh, which takes me up about you take me up um, about another one two three four feet maybe um, and obviously that giving me more um, more height and uh, completely um, taking out the element of the uh, the trucks and the buses and all that kind of stuff um, so that's something to look at for the summer or for the drier months because uh, and also when we get the um, when we get the the uh, the blocks Kim Kimmy, you definitely had your adrenaline rust for the ad adrenaline easy for you to say. <laughs> I said a jelly. Well, that's my exercise for a whole week done. Look here, no. There's only a couple of bleeding horses. Isn't it? Click clopping off down the road. quite surprised about the fact that thin air have so many aircraft spare aircraft available I say so many there are a few aren't there um, that they can offer like as we saw with Qantas in um, they were doing a Christchurch run weren't they in the thin air 330 was it Christchurch I'm not sure Kirsty Finch watching in work Joanna B, yeah, not enough for the lamppost. Well, fortunately, as you can see, the position that I've got um, gives us, oh, hello, runway inspection, what's going on here? We've got nothing in the, nothing in the stack. <laughs> John Davis, when's call the police, Jilly merchandise coming out? <laughs> Yeah, we're all good folks, just uh, just me being a bit of a drama queen, you know. It's the end of the world! Oh, okay, Xaviator, Qantas use their Finnair 330s for Sydney to Singapore. That's interesting, isn't it? That means that, obviously, it's either aircraft that are in certain so in a in a in a maintenance rotation uh i.e like what uh, virgin have got with one of their three uh, 787s that has come off the line uh in order to um in order to be repaired the engines to be repaired um kind of potentially what is the reason for that thin air um standing aircraft the lease aircraft and and interestingly enough it is a wet lease as well which is quite interesting Uh, yeah, um, you need to do a little bit more research than that, Danny. It's not just as simple as that. We're talking about something for uh, that during, you know, let's <laughs> just get battery power, access platform, battery access platform. You need more than that. You need to be able, you need a, you need a, a platform that is at least five foot by seven foot at least two meters by three meters um, in order for having the movement that the the the, the access and also in winds you wouldn't want to trust a, a flimsy little thing like that in high winds would you all you need we've been through this anyway we know what we're doing thanks anyway kev bond Raptor X Trevline. 
Jet Junkie Spotter. Finn Air was doing Singapore Sydney run, Jezza. Thank you, Jet Junkie Spotter. Yeah, I've got that. Okay, so um, so what was normally on that route, that uh, Singapore, uh, Sydney, Singapore, and vice versa um, route uh, before the Finn Air 330 came along, I'm guessing it was probably, well, it was either one of the two, wasn't it? It was either um, a Dreamliner or a, an A330. So one of those aircraft that they were using has obviously um, been um, uh, taken offline for service. <laughs> Melody, you see that? Too? Just after the horses, and I heard the sound of hooves. Couldn't believe they got down to Devon so fast. It was a local horse and rider. <laughs> That's funny, man. That's really funny. That Logan Air ATR only used a quarter of the runway before turning off Martin P. Yeah, obviously, um, you know, not very, uh, not running quite light today, I'd imagine. Sharon West, Shane D, Dave Carr. <laughs> language was appalling well yeah you just got to uh, you know all um... bang goes that job at the BBC well they're all not they're not all uh, they're not all um... Lloyd Brown Jerry you made my day yeah you, you know it's all a bit of uh, me being a Simon Morris, Jim Perry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Straight out, straight across the road into another field. Oh, okay. Sam Twigger, CPR. Dwayne Ulliette, good morning to you. Flew out to Malaga last Saturday, Finnair, and it was the same on my return on Saturday, Phil Martin. Uh, was that, a, 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 I'm guessing that was a BA slash Finnair um, lease, um, dry, wet lease, I'm, I'm guessing as well, aren't they? They're wet leasing these aircraft, which is interesting. So they come with crew and, uh, well, cabin and flight crew. Jonathan Beal, Deborah Sherwood. Moon phased. <laughs> you didn't see the bit with the yawning pony, did you? Really? Lloyd Bell, QF1, A382, 0925, John Grinham, A350 with Qatar on radar. And that was the one that we just saw. Uh, runway 27 left arrivals, if you're wondering, folks. We're at the paddock, London Heathrow, 0845. It's quite interesting, isn't it? The, uh, the atmospherics should not really be causing any issue whatsoever with these, uh, with the landings. As you can see, less than five knots, I'm, I'm, guess, I'm guessing. What are the um, wind conditions here? Um, thanks, mate. Scopey horse manure check. Daniel. Could I get a five year shout out, Jerry? It's been a pleasure subscribing for Big Jet TV and great to meet you in Greece. Daniel, thank you, sir. Um, you amongst all the others who've been with us for, uh, for so many years. Daniel Pearson, feels like five years ago I was in uh, Skiathos. Would have been a uh, $100,000 fine in Australia, one arm bandit saying. This is a good opportunity to see the wing losing all its lift. Watch this. Well, it would be a few. I'm not chopping away. <laughs> Russell Sprout, one of the funniest things. Yeah, I guess you could put a bit of music, couldn't you? <laughs> 
John Yeti, visions of Jerry lassoing horses one by one. Well, like I say, it was only a couple and um, they basically follow each other. Um, you, you, you move one and the... Hey? Yeah, I know that. Oh, okay, all right. Marjar N S Z. Good morning to you. Beautiful 350. Iberia, isn't it? Wow, look at this. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Sorry about that. Bit of a weak pan there. Oh, downwash, downwash. Nice. I've just shown you the wind shock, uh, wind shock, wind sock, Chantel. Do it one more time. There we go. That's um, very, very weak. Robo, oh, Robo Australia is a brand new M member. Welcome, Robo. Get out. One of the Aussie crew. Chantel, please, I've just shown you. I've, I've just shown you, Chantel. Uh, thank you. And yes, it is limp. Limp biscuit. Nailed that one. Wow. Or she. Trying to be. Good day to all the Aussies. Thank you, James McKelney. I appreciate that. I'll take a screen grab of that. <laughs> Thanks, mate. I use it in me, uh, in me court defence. Freeman photographer, Tiger 74, Lord Geeker. Uh, Hong Kong would not be an option, Lord Geeker, unfortunately, um, because of the uh, legal aspects of filming out there. Plus, uh, yeah, I think it'd be a bit more, uh, in, a bit more, um, yeah. Seriously? Yeah. Get a big downwash from this one. Great example of the flare there. Wow, look at that. Sorry, mate, I was just... Uh... That was a great um, visual example of the flare. Um, the last moment of when before touching down in order to get the back wheels because you don't want to land a big jet or a small jet or any aircraft really with the front wheel first uh, because of 
obviously the forward inertia that would drive the front and the carriage and uh, potentially damage it i mean obviously um they're built tough they're built real tough um these aircraft uh, right the way from the little tiny cessnas all the way up to these big ginormous super twins 380s etc um, but you do not want to be landing the 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 the, um, the procedure is to land it on the mains uh, and and therefore uh, that's what they call the flare where they pull the nose up ever so slightly um, and then literally that whole sequence where they um they retard the engines we've got some uh, vortex coming off this little fella look yeah. or Dublin or something like that some flare it quite early others uh, there it is there's the flare and that is something that is what is I, I, I classify as the feel um, oh a bit of a swerve there man. wow I'll tell you what that wind, I think it's, uh, I think it's worthy of a uh, standby. It's worthy of donning the coat, mate. That's, that's a chilly old wind there. No horses in the van. <laughs> it would be funny, wouldn't it? I open up the van, there's a bleeding horse sitting in there. Where have you come from? <laughs> Unless, uh, I mean, was it um, the pilots on the Singapore jet, Jilly, when we got to Singapore? And I said about streaming in Singapore and that it was, it was, you know, it was something that... No, I know, I know, I know, I know, but, uh, you know, in the east, and in the east where they sort of like, you know, um, he said that the airport are pretty open. So, you know, it's worth giving it a try, most definitely. Don't write it off. Christine Russell tuning in from Tasmania. G'day, Christine. Okay, there we go. Say it there, Dave. Okay, let's have a little look and see what we have so talking about uh, Aer Lingus these used to be this one in from Cork used to be the most um, busy route wasn't it um, with Aer Lingus Dublin but that has now gone to is the busiest route out of Heathrow or the busiest route from Heathrow or is it still Dublin American Airlines from Charlotte North Carolina up next Philip Jones QF1 just over the channel QF1 just over the channel Wow the big roo! Wow! Zombie Tog, Trev Lyon, Tim Johnson, Peter Room, HGC, Claire Bears, Mark Sprague. Hong Kong Airport is sinking 100 millimetres a year. Wow! 100 mil? That's, that's quite a lot, isn't it? Like, like in, in a decade, you're saying, basically, that it'll be... Um... I mean, 100 mil in a year, if it's sinking, that means in 10 years it's going to be 10... It's going to be a metre below where it was. Or a metre every decade. That's a lot, isn't it? Nicely done. Little bit of a crosswind there. You see them sort of like dipping that right wing in. Um, 
just to counteract any potential sort of like sudden movement where the where the aircraft can can get picked up and uh, and and shunt, shunted literally uh, over to the left if there's a strong enough breeze there but as you can see um the sock's doing absolutely solid it's just very lazy today the sock isn't it no it don't want to do anything today American 777 arriving between 0856 and 0915, Hamad Khan saying. Interesting, thank you. Uh, Andy P, Sydney was fantastic, thank you. In from Boston. Five hours and 37 minutes, it's quick isn't it? Wow. Tailwind. Nice clean aeroplane look. Carbon flaps look. See that right wing? Slightly dip. Good that. Jules Harris, all the best Jules. Uh, GV Jazz, yes indeed, JetBlue uh, flights to Dublin uh, since the 14th of March, 2024. It's one of Virgin Atlantic's A339s. Which I think the um, the fuel efficiency differences between those Trent 7000s and, their, uh, and their, their brother or sister, the Trent 700, uh, it's quite significant. Somewhere in the region of, is it 15% uh, increase in uh, fuel efficiency numbers? Jay Mank, Australia was tremendous, thank you. And uh, all of our, um, all members, um, obviously, First Class and Superclass can watch all of the streams from Sydney. But today we're going to be releasing the Sydney shows to our premium members, just like we always say we will do. Uh, CPR, busiest route right now from the Heathrow is the JFK route. 153 flights in the next seven days. Wow. That's crazy. Seven Lenny Australia was epic. Maurice Bruins, would Australia be a year? Well, now we've done it. Uh, I, th I think I think it was a little bit of a sort of like, ooh, you know, uh, it's a, it's a big one, isn't it? But you know, you just gotta. I'll be honest with you. I'm less. I think I'm less. Uh, uh, um, fatigued should I say um, than I am normally when I travel west to um, to the United States it's quite interesting that isn't it yeah Mojave BNSF have you spoken with Sid Squad about filming at Bangkok It's too far away, uh, apparently, uh, Mojave. Thank you. Yeah, the Bangkok position is 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 literally. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't spend all that money and go all that way to catch aircraft that are like miles and miles away. Um, yeah, yeah. I like to be quite close to the action, as close as I possibly can be. Um, but you know, just for the sake of it being Bangkok, I, I just wouldn't do it unless it was, you know, a lot closer. John AS eight six six. I've been to California, been to Los Angeles, 
many, many times. We were in Los Angeles before Kevin and his gang were uh, were streaming out there, folks. We were, uh, you know, there's a lot of people who don't appreciate. To, we we were we were that we are the um uh, you know the starters. We started the whole thing off with streaming, uh, live streaming aviation. Um, uh, and, and a lot of people have, have um, you know, uh, followed suit and good luck to all of them. Uh, some of them are great. Some of them are a little bit questionable as to their, uh, their uh, modus operandi, um, but we'll leave it at that. You know, um, but yeah, we've been to LAX Gold so many times, it's, uh, I've lost count. Scott Heverington, Geneva or JFK for the busiest? JFK, we've just found out, Scott. Claire Bear, good, uh, good day. Martin Saxton, Seoul, South Korea has to be on your hit list. Why is that? Uh, I don't know. I don't think we can stream in South Korea, can we? Might end up on that banged up abroad show. doing a seven stretch streaming every Wednesday from my cell block <laughs> oh here he comes look yeah you have a good uh, go on have a good chew mate look at the state of the front of me van man that's the horses mate that's the horses five thousand pounds worth of damage all the way around the van that is all the way around it um, that's why it's actually pointless getting the van done, isn't it? Uh, until... There he goes, look. Yeah, you're right there, son. Have a good kick. <laughs> GP Jazz, she is delayed. Yeah, that's the Singapore uh, jet. Forgive me, folks, you'll know if you're a regular to Big Jet TV, I'm, uh, I'm very late on the comments a lot of times, very delayed myself on the comments, because obviously I'm streaming, filming, looking around the airfield, um, seeing what's going on, but at the same time, uh, trying to read your comments, X Aviator, Big Room must be a bit late, Nick's carnival videos just under five weeks till i fly to berlin on british airways one five there we go um cargolux uh, shane de costa have you heard about turkmenistan airlines moving from heathrow to london gap from april 3rd well if they are they are that's a um it's a bit of a shame but uh we haven't seen turkmenistan for a little while have we at heathrow once well uh, to provide a once weekly flight from Ashgabat operating the Boeing 777-200 aircraft cargo like 747 fan yeah we have uh, we are looking at the option of Christchurch Grant W big Roo running three hours late quite interesting yesterday I got a phone call from uh, well we got an email from uh, an, an agency who are doing um, uh, doing some research for one of their clients about um, delays and what is the um, most sort of like what airport is the most um, uh, common for delays in the UK it's researching 20 uh, um, airfields in the UK airports active airports that is and i said to him i'll be honest with you uh, there is no airline and there is no um uh, 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 airport that should be in any way um, uh, um shunned upon for being you know bad for delays or notorious for delays or notorious for this that and the other um because it literally is it's 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 potluck in it and I did say to him, because I said, because well, he researched these 20 airports, 
And I said, uh, he's, a, he's a member actually, he's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a viewer, I don't know if he's a member or a viewer, but anyway, um, was it Callum, 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 um, but um, yeah, big shout out to you, mate. Um, he, w it, 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 he, he mentioned um, that on average, aircraft are like 30 minutes late. And I said to him, look, I fly very often and uh, and anybody who flies often should appreciate that if an aircraft is due to go out at say 12.30 there's absolutely no way that aircraft is going out from the gate pushing back and wheels off ground at 12.30 that's the estimate, estimated departure time the, the ETD um, the, 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 it's almost guaranteed every single time if it's half past you won't be in the you won't be in the air probably much before uh, the hour I would have thought um, because that is generally the you know because you've got slight delays with um, with baggage being loaded um, maybe uh, waiting for a, for a, for, a, for a, um, someone to turn up delays on the ground you know taxiing all that kind of stuff all adds up. Yeah, so I, I said to him, "Blimey, half an hour. That's good. If an aircraft is 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 is, is it's not so much delayed, is it? It's it's arrival time. You know, it's estimated to be, and that's always estimated. The ETD or the ETA, estimated time of arrival or departure. Um, I think this Qatar jet's going to come out straight across the runway, isn't he? You just bring yourself out here, mate." George 350. Yeah, so really at the end of the day, you cannot pinpoint uh, and point the finger at any airport or any airline for being notorious for delays, can you? Um, it just all does depend. Sometimes there might be a, um, you know, um, a 30 minute delay due to whatever it might be. It could be, you know, if there are delays at one airport, it may be nothing to do with the airport, nothing to do with the airlines. It's because of the, um, the inbound aircraft that are coming from another airport that have got strike action or they've got, um, you know, uh, delays because of sickness with, um, with uh, employees, you know, like air traffic controllers, all that kind of thing can all add up. Uh, Dale Foster, thank you, Dale, he's gifted a membership. Yeah, so you cannot pinpoint it. called me a travel expert, I thought that was a little bit odd. <laughs> yeah, look at that big old Ladler. Just amazing flying on the 380. If you're, on, if you're halfway across the wing, you're not going to see anything. Um, because not only that, the, the, um, the, the spacing between the outside glazing panel and the in, inboard glazing panel is probably about 12 inches so um, it's still quite difficult to get a good shot out of the window you've got to use your um, use your imagination or have a very long neck <laughs> palette man Easy, 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 there we go. Nicely straightened up. Raptor X loved the Dash 8 and Saab action at Sydney. It was great, wasn't it? We love a prop. Jay Mank, wait, what? Uh, we were once sat on board and we were delayed as they had to order a part. <laughs> well, they would have hopefully had that in the stores because um, 
Otherwise, that's a significant delay. I remember, of course, um, when I was flying out of Gatwick with um, Tui, wasn't it, on the 757? I think it was the, almost the last operation with that 757. Uh, and they had to change the brakes out, swap the brakes out. Unfortunately, to swap brakes out is very, very easy. Look at this geezer over here. You shouldn't be doing that, mate. Oh, oh, it's fruit. Is it fruit? Hopefully that's free fruit and not. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because they have got cameras here at the field. Um, because they did have some dodgy uh, local business dropping all its uh, old bread down here. And, and horses don't. They like it. They'll have a munch on it. Horses will eat anything, but it's not good for their stomach, is it? Uh, Fly SSC LL Retro 787-9, flying in later this morning. She is indeed a beauty. Not, you know, stunningly beautiful, but a good retro all the same. Um, not sort of like, you know, visually, uh, 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 um, aesthetically pleasing as the Saudi Arabian Airlines uh, new livery, uh, which is crazy to say, isn't it? New old livery. BA320 from Istanbul. It was that that one that just uh, crossed the line. Uh, I've had weather delays due to thunderstorms, Nick Carnival. Yeah, weather. Uh, there's all sorts of, um, you know, extenuating circumstances. Which, um, you know, can lead to, and don't, don't forget, you know, um, you know, for example, in the morning, like we had on the uh, Singapore jet. If um, if it's busy, which it always is at Heathrow in the in the early morning when uh, when the arrivals start, uh, there's a lot of stacking going on. So you could be um, you could be sitting in that holding pattern for like 40 minutes, and that's where they that's where the contingencies come in for the fuel as well. Because you were in the van too, after Kathy Williams, Sue Cruz, Beverly George, Trev Lyon, Claire Bear, Emre Unlu. Aidan Campbell, good morning, Paul B, Maurice Bruce. Missing the bin chickens. Yeah, Chili. Chili bought a, uh, a cuddly bin chicken. I think the I think I think the best thing I saw were the uh, were the punk pigeons, and they don't even call them anything out there, do they? They don't they haven't got a name for the uh, for the pigeons out in Australia, have they? Or have they? Because they've got like a proper punk hairstyle and everything. Our, bi our pigeons are proper boring over here now, aren't they? Ooh, ooh. All right, mate, all right, don't get a complex. Ooh. All right, all right. HGC. Fluky. Going to miss the 717 when Qantas retire the entire fleet. Yeah, you know what? Uh, if I was asked, what would you rather have, A220s or 717s, in terms of visually seeing them ourselves, I would, I would, I'd opt for the 717s, but, it's going to be quite some time, folks, before those. Um, it's going to be quite some time before those 717s are fully replaced because it's going to take quite a number of years before the A220s are. Because uh, they've got the rest of the. Um, they've got the whole fleet, haven't they? Yeah. Lisa Baker, good morning, Tony. Sounds a bit like Mr. Magoo then. Oh, man. Wah! Flare it. Nice.
chemical tanker driver. Manchester Airport is awful for delays. Not the airline's fault, though, due to mismanagement of the airport. Well, that's um, need to sort of like, you know, is that it's sort of like, you know, I don't like to, uh, whether that's just people's opinion or whether it is statistically, um, because, uh, you know, um, shortage of staff, check-in staff, um, uh, uh, ground teams, you know, baggage handlers, all of that stuff sort of like can um, end up in big delays and obviously it's not a good thing to have a reputation in any way is it i'll be honest with you um chemical tanker driver that's that's the first i've ever heard of manchester being um terrible for delays um but you know um if that's what you've read then uh, fair enough steve batty sandy humby greg once had an 11 hour delay at Manchester, problem with one of the wings. There you go, you see. Problem with one of the wings. Wow. It's a little bit, uh, blimey, that's a bit close for comfort, wasn't it? Wow, I'm surprised he didn't go around, mate. Look how close that is. It wasn't that far off the uh, runway. Yeah, of course we had a uh, we had a uh, well I had a um, what was it a, 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 about an hour delay coming back from San Francisco because a passenger looked out on the wing and obviously and understandably so with all these problems with you know uh, concerned people with flying and it's understandable they've looked out on the wing and they've seen paint peeling off the wing. Um, and they've obviously brought that to the attention of the of the cabin crew. The cabin crew have then spoken to the pilot. Um, someone's done an inspection, and um, that passenger uh, was obviously uh, and understandably, if you're not used to flying or not used to understanding the complexities of an airplane wing, in as much that the paint is literally a uh, is a is a sealant for the wing, uh, preventing you know ultraviolet rays and also the um the fact that it's got a carbon wing as well very difficult to paint over carbon um easy to stick stickers onto you know to adhere uh, vinyl but in terms of painting it's a very specialist paint isn't it uh, painting wings and, and dreamliners have had problems uh, over the years with paint peeling on the wings um, Airbus don't seem to have that problem, but Boeing have seem to have that problem anyway. So we're sitting on the aircraft and there's a bit of a delay and a little bit of a delay. And, a, and then I'm noticing people getting up out of their seat and looking out on the left hand side of the plane. I'm like, what's going on over there? And I can hear people whispering like, oh, in the wing and there's a, people there and there's a, and I'm like, oh, okay, what's going on? So I go out of my seat and look, there's a bleeding geezer sitting on the wing, sitting on the wing, obviously with a harness on and all that, putting a speed tape onto the wing um, now it is a little bit sort of like funny in it that a customer who's flying on the aircraft is concerned over the fact that there's peeling paint um, and yet is is quite happy to see someone clambering over the wing and sticking a load of gaffer tape on it um, <laughs> so hold on a minute you're telling me that 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 that, that tape is but it was nothing to worry about. And the great thing was that, obviously it wasn't gaffer tape, was it? It was speed tape, we all know about that, and how much it costs per reel, um, because they use it in, um, in performance vehicles and, um, and high speed places where, the, where there's a high speed airflow, like on an airplane wing or, uh, or an airplane fuselage, etc. It's a temporary fix. Um, for, um, for, uh, for, 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 for whatever it might be. So this geezer's obviously gone and stuck a load of tape on it. I was, and, and we went, and, but we were delayed by about an hour. Was it about an hour's delay, San Francisco, Jilly? Um, and, um, and, 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 and when we got to London, the tape was still on there, which I was quite surprised at, to be honest with you, especially as the geezer's got up on the wing and he's literally carried out a quick fix.
Yes, yes, indeed, indeed. Uh, but but they did. They they um the 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 uh, the crew on board did put an announcement out on the aircraft in the cabin to say um, we've got a slight delay. We've got, you know if uh, they didn't mention anything about the wing, but they did say if anybody gets off the aircraft, uh, you're more than welcome to leave the aircraft. However, if you get off, you're not coming back on. Um, because of obviously security reasons and so on and so forth and your baggage is likely to stay on the aircraft and uh, you'll have to claim it back etc etc um, just because they wanted to minimize the amount of delay or length of delay Kev Parker, if you ever tried to replace, uh, to, to remove speed tape, you know while it was there. Okay, yeah, fair enough. I'm guessing they may need some sort of like uh, solution to remove it. I'm guessing there's a procedure to remove for removing speed tape. Interesting that the uh, the Formula One guys use that clear stuff, don't they? Around all the um, all around all the gaps. I'm guessing there's different elements, different types and variants of speed tape. Uh, the ones that they put on the F1 cars are almost like uh, clear, um, as they called it in, um, in, the, in the good old days of Blue Peter, sticky back plastic. Because <laughs> they couldn't use the word sellotape, could they? make a mini Cooper out of uh, toilet rolls, a bit of sticky back plastic and a, and a fairy liquid bottle. <laughs> George, A350, Aiden Campbell, QF1 is circling over Hornchurch. There we go, we're... Uh, first time we caught the big roof for a little while, isn't it? Seymour saying, have you seen anything of the new Russian passenger aircraft being built since Airbus and Boeing Paul Yeah, you know what, I read up on that. Um, but I didn't read too much of it. Uh, Yakolev MS-21 medium-haul narrow-body aircraft will now start operate, operating in 2025. So, yeah, but what about the long-haul stuff? Russia's a big place, in it? Um, Lovely to see the old, um, is it the uh, Illusions? They were Russians, weren't they? Uh, the Illusion IL, IL-76 and all those uh, crazy looking aeroplanes. Uh, copies of the VC-10, a Tupolev Tu-154, was it? Looked like a 727 uh, on steroids. Uh, Peter Gourlay, lots of elevator play on that 787. Um, obviously another one, uh, thanks Peter, great to see you. Yeah. Um, what, what you will notice uh, with the elevators is that um, of course it's a bit like, uh, it's a bit like, you know, you're, you're controlling the descent of an aeroplane literally right the way down to the point where it touches down. And then when it's touched down as well, you might see the elevators being held in the up position ever so slightly to, 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 to minimize the the sink rate uh, or bring make the sink rate a lot smoother this is a max is this a lot oh another jet blue. wow so now you, yeah you'll notice um you know obviously at this stage the elevators are what really are being used in terms of you know controlling the aircraft and here it goes now, you might see a little bit of upward, no, you see, it's to, because it's a 737, it's got such a small, um, a, a short undercarriage, you don't get much elevator play on that. But um, the pilot will use the elevators to, uh, to slow the aircraft's nose coming down onto the runway. 
Nice bit of reverser action there from those leaps, man. Aviation Singapore, well, good day to you. Matford Farm, uh, giving a shout out to whoever gifted the membership. Much appreciated, very kind of you, Matford. Sticky back plastic wasn't sellotape, Jerry. Steve Batty saying, wasn't it? What was it? Oh, this is uh, Jet Blue, another Jet Blue from Boston. Back in those days, the only sticky back plastic I thought that was around was sellotape, wasn't it? Was there another brand or something? Yeah, you'll notice there's the elevator. See him, see him, mini. Oh, well, you would do. But that's why he said uh, a lot of elevator action on the um, on the seven eight seven, because obviously, you know. Um, once the aircraft's main gear is on the ground, then it's uh, then it's a little bit of elevator to control the um, the rate of uh, descent of the of the front wheel onto the onto ground. Was it only the new Trend Seven Thousands that they changed on the three three nine, or did they modify the airframe? Nick Fishenden asking. Well, you know what? They probably uh, like all um, uh, um, f air framers, uh, Airbus and Boeing. You know, on on their um, on new aircraft that are on the on the uh, assembly line, uh, the the um, the manufacturers may, you know, the independent manufacturers may well make slight modifications. But that's during, you know, any build. You know, uh, cars, uh, aircraft, motorcycles, anything. You know, um, from one year to the next, they may incorporate. Um, uh, changes to certain specifications, not so much specifications, but equipment that's used, you know, different materials. Um, they may change uh, some of the uh, wing spar elements in terms of the materials that they use, may switch it to, a, to something else, a, a slightly lighter material, and they're always testing for that kind of thing. But in terms of the visual aspects of the A339, the NEO, um, it is, um, it is a, a highly modified wing to obviously incorporate a bigger engine, uh, but also the, uh, the wing tip itself, the winglet, or the, um, the, uh, that is fully modified and brand new, all carbon. Uh, but in terms of the fuselage and the general um, appearance of it, I think it's actually the same as the A330 uh, CEO. It's mainly just uh, the wing and like you say, uh, obviously the engines themselves and the wing tips um, and maybe a couple of other uh, changes that we don't get to see. Um, and like I say, that's, that's, that's sort of the, the way that the engine manufacturers work as well in terms of um, modifying stuff. You know, they may, uh, the, 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 you know, the engine manufacturer may have a supplier. They may switch from one uh, fuel pump supplier to another or hydraulic systems, all that kind of thing to, 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 to uh, get uh, more performance from the engine, etc., etc. Rascas, yeah. A few people mentioning about the, um, about the trip to Haas, folks, the video. We have, we have done a, 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 re, um, a revised edit on that. Well, when I say a revised edit, I mean um, we've, we've changed the audio on it. Well, well m improved the audio so you can hear it better because uh, the audio was very low on the, uh, the Connie and the 747. Uh, so you might want to, if you if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, have a look back in our. Did we? Did you up? Did you reload it, Jilly, or or is it? Okay, okay. Nah, no, I don't think so. No, no, because it's an hour. It's an hour, and so so it's quite long, isn't it? And that's that's just gonna that's, that's just gonna mean that you know. Um, 
well, could, we could do a we could do a live intro and, and then just premiere it or something, Jilly, can we? Yeah, maybe we'll do that. Uh, CPR Big Roo number eight on flight radar twenty four. Can we make it? Can we get it to number one? I don't think that's going to be a problem, is it? Okay, folks, need you if you're uh, if you're watching. Look, still gear up on this thing. No gear down just yet. It's going to quite soon, I would imagine. Of course, this is the 330 CEO. See the um, fence-style winglet, the, the straight-edged winglet, rather than the um, highly modified curved carbon winglet. Of course, these are alloy winglets as well. Um, but, um, of course, with a bigger engine, means a little, probably a little bit more weight. I don't know, because bigger cowls, bigger, bigger um, uh, um, engine components, um, in fact, if anything, the Trent 7000 is more geared towards the, uh, the Trent 1000. Uh, doesn't have really any similarities with its, uh, with its younger brother, the Trent 700. So let's get the big route to number one, folks. Come on, let's do it. Let's do it for Sydney, yeah? <laughs> Oh yes, yes, yes. That's funny. Yeah, it was a sequence of events when it was a sequence of events when it, yeah. Superalot, superalot. Uh, Jilly uh, and Jerry, do you remember the short 330s and 360s pre ATP? I do remember the shorts. Are they still flying? Well, they, if they are, they'll probably be some kind of. Um, you know, freighter modification or something like that, I'd imagine. Um, yeah, I remember the shorts 360s. That's, that's about in, around about the days of the Islander and the Trilander, wasn't it? 70s, 80s. She's number three, Sabira saying. Uh, Avro, how far out from Heathrow do the pilots get word that they'll be going into a hold? Uh, Avro, that will be at the top of descent. Um, when the, when, when, um, when they start the descent, they will contact control, uh, not not Heathrow control, but um, there's a there's a there's there's a number of different waypoints that they will contact, and they will be given information about um, the likelihood of them being uh, stacked in a hole. So a long way out, Avro. Is this the room coming up behind this triple seven? Okay, folks, let's get out of number one. Come on, you can do it. See the elevators there. Fish, almost like fish like uh, movement on the elevators, you see there. And you'll see it on this big, uh, this big Qantas 380, folks. Not often I get to say that in the UK. Qantas A380, here we go. G'day, we asked a thousand people. Shorts Skyvan was another one built in Belfast, Ulster Aviation, yes. Shorts uh, are, a, are an Irish company, aren't they? Um, CPR, we now need to reach 1,300, 1,300, oh, 1,400 we need, CPR. Come on folks, get it to number one. Louis, long wheelie. 
Qantas 380 from Singapore, Raptor X, there we go. Um, quite a big delay on this jet today, I believe. Those big boards, mate. Wow, that's insane, mate. Just a sheet. Wow. Oh, we would have seen that one in Sydney more likely. It's probably parked right outside our bleeding window, mate. Lisa G, when we flew back from Milan earlier this month, the pilot told us they had been told whilst flying over France to reduce speed and prepare to be in the hold. Yeah, you see, that's um, that's 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 what it is, really. It's um, depends on where you are and um, your position, and um, and and maybe even you know um, if if a lot of these pilots are seasoned pilots, of course, and. Um, and so they're fully aware that uh, an early morning arrival at London Heathrow is going to result in being held in the um, in the in the hold, whether it's uh, the north or south, east or west. Top of the pops, flight flight radar twenty four. Sarah Louise nailed the big room landing. Todd Greenwell, number one worldwide, tracked by one thousand six hundred twenty eight Aiden uh, Campbell. And yeah, folks, like I was saying earlier, if you want a sticker, um, it's uh, I deal with that. I deal with that. Uh, then you, all you've got to do is download the app, Big Jet TV Live, uh, in in whatever you're on, whether you're on Android or, or iOS. Um, download the uh, download the app. No in no in app purchases. It's completely free. Uh, we just you we just done it as a another tool for you to get your notifications, etc., etc. Um, nice bit of reverser from that. Yeah, uh, and then if you scroll down on the uh, on the app, you'll see the uh, free sticker, and just follow the prompts there. You just need to send a self-addressed envelope. There's another one, is there? Beverly George, abandoned UK number one. We got it just in time. CPR, three and a half hours late. Nicholas Twist. What's that, GP? No, that was it. The Airbus did not stop the A380 uh, production in the name of climate change. No, where you got that from? <laughs> so, you've been reading the wrong bleeding things. If if you've Airbus stopped the A380 production um, because of the Super Twins. Literally, nobody wanted them anymore um, because they, they're, 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 you know, uh, it's quite simple. It's the same with the 747, why the 747 production was, uh, and why um, operators were, 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 were retiring their, their four engine jets is because it's, you know, when you're faced with an aircraft that can fly across the Atlantic for half the price literally uh, and carry almost the same amount of passengers uh, it kind of is a no-brainer isn't it to uh, to operate a super twin and save billions of dollars in fuel costs and also um, uh, uh, less damage to the environment let's face it um, but at, at the same time one needs to remember and uh, appreciate the fact that aviation in general is only about um, about two and a half percent globally of um, of uh, 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 um, of uh, the um, the footprint. Of 
course when we got down to Sydney one of the first things we noticed was the 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 old variant livery versus the new one and uh, I like what Qantas have done uh, where they just literally made very subtle changes to their to their livery uh, in terms of modernizing it if you look at the old livery the roux on the back the kangaroo's got this one's got no uh, front arms on it um, and also the Qantas logo is uh, the Qantas logo is no longer that sort of like very bold um, heavily bold wasn't it wow sync rate nicely controlled beautifully controlled see that's a nice landing there Well done everyone, Sue Cruz, WB Travels, Transport in Kent, George A350, Kaz, Jeanette Haynes, Andrew Hickenbottom, Jeanette, uh, Tiger 74. Ulster Aviator, the wings of the 220 are built in Belfast, indeed they are, and collected by uh, Am oh, Antonovs to be delivered to Canada, the AM124, yes indeed. Thank you Ulster Aviation. Yeah. Um, uh, it's very. Um, uh, uh, in fact, I think that I think that's a, a big part of the um, of you know another huge part to play in terms of business for uh, Ireland. Somebody saying that um, they they've lived in Australia for years and never knew that. Um, that uh, Qantas had changed their livery. Well, I didn't know until I got out there, um, but for somebody who lives there, um, you know, it's understandable. If, uh, I, I don't, I, I'll be honest with you, I don't even think Qantas made a big deal of it when they changed it. I think they sort of like, kind of subtly did it under the radar, didn't they? Which is kind of, a, kind of the best way to do it. If you're doing subtle changes like that, you don't want to make a big thing of it because all you get is people like, I don't like it, I want the old one. You know, oh, it's really nice, I don't like it. Uh, Jordan and Charlie answering questions about Kempton Fair, uh, Kempton Park. Well, we've already been to a Kempton Park Fair once already, haven't we? Wingtip Vortex. Oh, right, OK, OK, that was that. Yeah, what Qantas stands for is something that a lot of people don't know, and uh, probably, way there you go. Now that was a that was a heavy flare. That was over flared a little bit there. Pulled it, obviously recovered it well. Um, but um, well, you say nice warm weather of Australia. I was out on that roof, and it was uh, it was quite chilly, wasn't it? With all the rain and that. Um, but. Um, but uh, the, um, yeah, Qantas, Queensland and Northern Australian te Territories or something like that. Northern Territory. Okay, Queensland and Northern Aviation, uh, Northern Territories Aviation Services is what? Aerial Services, Aerial Services, wow. Mm, uh, uh. Nice logo, I like that. Fly out, see the Asian group. So either going to pick up freight or just picked up freight, one of the two. Yeah, the bandit, the bandit. Acronym, yeah. See, that's where the finesse comes in, isn't it? The little tiny movements of the elevator. Uh, of course, with a Boeing jet, central yoke, so it's just a sort of like a very s slight movements, micro movements, and not only that, but when you're flying an aeroplane, um, it's, it is, a, especially a big aeroplane like this, you get what's, what's known as lag. 
Um, so if you move the if you move the stick, pull it towards you, you'll get a little bit of a time delay with the aircraft actually re uh, responding, and that's why you see when they're when they're landing, especially on the Boeing jet. Uh, in heavy winds you'll see what looks to be very violent maneuvers on the yoke whereas and, and, and that is not the case it is literally where they are putting the input in and then counteracting it almost coming back to a to counteract it and that again is what's known as the feel where you know the aircraft you're at one with it One of Delta's 339s yet. They've all been their uh, 200 CEOs today, haven't they? See, right about now, look at the elevators, look, 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 just controlling that descent nice and smooth. And now backs on the ground, she'll keep the elevators ever so slightly in the upward position just so that the front end can come down nice and smooth. Um, of course, they're already on the brakes, they're already on the, you know, the. Uh, the, the, the systems on the Airbus, I believe, uh, auto speed brakes, so they come up automatically. Uh, obviously, again, it is something that can be preset, um, I believe, uh, whether it is a pilot-induced um, uh, speed, speed brake action or ground spoilers, should we say. Uh, there's two uses, basically, on the aircraft uh, for, those, for those big boards on the wings that you see in the upward position there. They are ground spoilers whilst the aircraft's on the ground um, and uh, speed brakes also used uh, during the descent um, to, to control uh, the speed of descent and also uh, sometimes you know just to sort of like you know uh, rather than using the, the the high speed ailerons on the Airbus which are all the way out on the end of the wing um, they will use those um, use those uh, the, 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 the speed brakes uh, just also to sort of minimise the twist in the wing. Maurice Bruins, Qantas started to remove the kangaroo arms from the livery in 2016. There we go. Delta does eventually leave the airport. Susan Gerrard, I'd say. Um, it, yeah, because the other one is at. Um, the other one is at. Um, oh. No, 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 no. We went to one at Kempton Park about three, four months ago, didn't we? We met Paul from ARD down there. Um, there's one at Kempton Park and there's, and Russell from Gemini Jets, yes. There's one at Kempton Park and there's one at, oh, there's a golf range. That's the only reason. It's the race horse, isn't it? A race course, sorry. Kempton Park is obviously a race course, but there's the other race course, isn't there? Oh, where is it? Yeah, I'm not going, I'm not going to a, yeah. Ian Finley, don't know, didn't see that. 787 bird strike. Minus cube, 330s often seem to land smoothly. Not sure if it's just me thinking. Well, you know what, Maurice, uh, minus, sorry, minus cube. Good, good point, that. We'll see on the next one. I think, I think, I, I think I can quite honestly say that I think the 330, because the 330 has that big drooping main gear, where they literally, the, the back wheels touch first, and then slowly the front, the front set touches down and then then everything starts to happen um but uh, but yeah in terms of it's almost like tippy toes isn't it when it when, when a 330 lands he's just you know putting his toes in the water and checking the temperature um so i think that's why we see that because on a triple seven you know it's kind of wallop everything comes down all, all at once uh, i mean i know that the triple seven has a droopy uh, main gear as well um this is a 767-400 with a forward-facing gear. What's this? Look at the gear drooping forward. It's 
so that so the pilots will just land this in a traditional way but you'll see how the the front gear will stick first and then the back will very quickly follow suit it's almost at the same time isn't it i think they sort of like looked upon that i think um it's almost like the 350 where it sort of like looks odd because it looks like it's out of out of out of level but the the, the, the landing gear the, the wheels themselves are level with the, the the runway whereas the aircraft is pitched nose high um, but they've done that specifically to to allow all four wheels to touch at once and i think that even though those those um the 767 has that forward uh leaning undercarriage or forward pitched undercarriage um it's still la it still touches down both wheels almost uh in sync the dallas 383 out avro arrow saying thank you that was the bcrf livery aiden campbell 767 painted in april 20, 2002 or was that is that how old it uh, how old it is how old it is 22 years old wow Aiden Campbell GXLEB third to land super a lot are there any two Pelevs still flying into Heathrow no sir Unfortunately, I used to fly the t fly on TU-134s out of Manchester to split in Croatia. Desperately noisy at the back of the fuselage, just like DC-9 727s and BAC-111s. Sounds to me, super a lot, like you're, uh, you're, you're, you're one of my, um, uh, one from my era. Wow, look at that. Track this 380 in, shall we? Ian Provero watching while patiently waiting for jury service. Probably have to stop when I go into the courtroom. Members of the jury, have you reached a verdict? Uh, no, we've got 10 minutes left to free view and then we'll just, uh, I'll, I'll give you my verdict then. <laughs> I'm gonna hold you in contempt, sir. All right. Yes. Ali Jones's bedtime. Sleep well, Ali. I dreamt about Qantas last night, and it was about it, it, there were 707s in there, and there were 707s in there, and they were going round and round the block. I didn't, I, I, I don't know, round and round and round about. I, I don't know what was going on. Speedway chips. She's a clean bird, man. She's a clean bird. Lots of downwash, lots of downwash. Here we go. Nice. I think that's sort of like the uh, ferocity of landing from... Um, well, that's a big downwash, man. For our, from our flight. It doesn't look it on the on the on the screen, uh, you know. You don't hear it. You do hear the uh, the, the 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 touchdown uh, on the video. I'll post it later, folks, if you want to look at it. Cheryl Howard, daughter is off to JFK on Sunday lunchtime. Okay, well we'll have to see what we're doing on Sunday, uh, Cheryl. Yes, please email the details. Contact at bigjet.tv. Um, Andy P, Jill Dor, Wayne Delaporte, Jill Dor, love you and leave your folks stuff to do. Take care, all the best. Digital David, nearly, nearly. <laughs> BA 
8777 from Los Angeles. Thank you, Raptor X. Yeah, I'm going to get a downwash from this one. Listen out, listen. Sounds like an F15 going out. Wow, big downwash. Wow, folks, did you hear that? I, I, I need to hear that before Brian Stewart Digital, David. I did get it right, didn't I? <laughs> it's, just, it's just that Digital Dave rolls off the tongue nicely, doesn't it? Um, thank you, Digital David. Uh, Phil W, TU134154 used to fly into Alder Grove a long time ago, very smoky. Well, they used to fly them all in here as well, didn't they? And there are there is evidence of that online, on YouTube, uh, old videos from back in the 70s and 80s. Oh, wow, Tony McCall, that BA380 had been in Manila for the whole of January. Must have been a D-check. smoke trails on the 154s and you could always hear an Aleutian 18 going into Manchester from miles around. Well you know what I used to live when I was a young lad I used to live not that far well I say not that far I was in uh, I was in uh, 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 somewhere called uh, Hayward Heath which is on the which is in Sussex probably uh, about 20 miles from Gatwick and uh, wow when the 707s went out all the 111s and they would uh, depending on um, the the departures departure route that they took I remember when I was a kid they used to train uh, CL44 pilots with trade winds out over over my village and you could see them flying out with like what with like two engines going it was just like you know obviously doing um, engine failure uh, training Oh, the leaves are brown and the sky is grey, then the sky is grey. I went for a walk, went for a walk on a winter's day, on a winter's day. Oh, I don't know what this is. Which it was in LA. California dreaming. Sorry. Oh, we and yes, we did get the uh, we did get the video uh, the screenshot, wasn't it? We completely forgot about that. Uh, thank you for that, Ian. Yes, it, uh, and, and and of course it all brought that to our attention. Um, and that's why that aircraft was sitting over there the, de the next day when we were on top of the um, Hilton Garden Inn, wasn't it? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Lord Giga, woke the dog up. Yeah. <laughs> Barry uh, Gilfillan. Uh, Gilf yeah, Gilfillan, isn't it? Barry is a brand new member. Well, Barry, 
as a brand new member, mate, you can now tune in this afternoon to watch all the Sydney shows. Have some of that, sir. As a brand new member, if you are new today, folks, um, all our premium members, obviously the first class and super class members catching up on Sydney, um, but if you are a premium member, you can grab yourself some Sydney action. <laughs> Yeah, I think the uh, show should come with a um, Steve Batty first two lines of summer songs. Paul Hopkins, <laughs> it's funny. Man. Mark Sprague, Australia was amazing. Yeah. A lot of names that I'm seeing now. Um, oh, here she comes. Yeah, look at that. Andy P, Rab H. Peter Room top notch pigeon. Mate, I tell you what, if you if you don't if you don't know what I'm talking about with the punk pigeons in Australia, go and search Australian pigeon, I guess. Um, uh, that's all you need to do. The little Joey going out. Um, mind you, it's being towed in it. So he's going to a remote stand. Um, yeah, yeah, amazing pigeons, man. They rock, mate. They rule the they rule the bird sort of like oh oh easy son that was close wasn't it that was close it's a 339 look yeah it was what was it Jilly what was the um uh, the, the sequence of events uh, a couple of weeks ago when we were filming from uh mind that when we were filming from Hilton Garden Inn and we and we and we and we filmed an aircraft coming in had absolutely no idea that it had suffered a bird strike on approach had a dirty great big hole in the leading edge uh, it was a slat obviously not the wing but the lit well you know officially classified as part of the wing um, but uh, literally had suffered a bird strike on approach into London Heathrow um, and uh, it was right there uh, he sent us a picture of it um, and that's why it was parked at which airline was it Jelly was it what, what I can't remember what it Saudi it was a Saudi jet and it was one of their new retros wasn't it wasn't it their 787 10 or something I seem to remember Greg Missenden uh, yeah six months old hold on here we go look at this beautiful man the big boopy nose on him look look at that mate this tree that is a proper jetliner not sure about the um whatever that is 75 year emblem on the side there I'm not I'm not a big fan of that I think it kind of like messes with it so you know but that's an overlay sticker I think folks I don't think that's part of the um, so that'll come off at some point hopefully I don't know sometimes I leave them on don't they for a uh, Steffi Quinlan just loved the retros Just looks great. Look at his smiling face, look. 
with his big black nose look look at him look hello <laughs> Ash Morrison's a brand new member welcome Ash Yeah, I watched that. We watched that footage back of the engine start on the Connie, and I, I, I had no idea that it was unbelievably smoky, man. You got to watch that back because, especially now as we've re we rejigged the audio on it, folks, you'll hear that engine start up, and there is nothing like an old radial piston engine um, starting up, uh, even if it is just one engine. Absolutely stunning, man, and great to hear. Scott Whittam, koala face on the retro jet. Aidan Campbell, Air Malta circling. Uh, and they're stopping their services, aren't they, Air Malta? So we need to, um, and we got, the, we, got, we got a message from the pilot who's gonna be operating that aircraft on the day. Um, so we need, to, we need to stay on top of that. Claire Bear, awesome watching the engine man. Sarah Louise, amazing startup. Di Digital David, did you read about LS217 last week? Uh, LS217? No. What, what about it, Digital David? Uh, yeah, no. Old livery with um, Aer Lingus. I quite like that old livery with Aer Lingus. When I say old livery, it's the one prior to the most recent update, but um, you know, you kind of imagine 707s and um, uh, 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 757s definitely A330s I flew with Aer Lingus on an A330 well I flew with it my baggage didn't um, to New York thanks for that Ash Morrison you have one beautiful country be proud of it I took one of your beautiful people as my wife oh there we go Raptor X that Aer Lingus 320 in from Dublin uh, Michael Parry thank you Michael Captain Ron tuning in. Air Malta Airbus 320, Aiden Campbell, five minutes out. Uh, often don't track A320, but this is a special rare one. Okay. Cheryl Howard, Air Malta carrying on under new management. I'm not sure, but I know for sure that they are um, ceasing operations at old Londonian Heathrow. I've got to say, um, Heathrow have lost quite a lot of, um, they've been quite competitive Gatwick in poaching airlines, haven't they? Um, some people say it might not be such a good thing because they might not have the infrastructure down there to cope with all the new uh, operations. Hope they do. And um, I'm sure it will, uh, it will, it will work out. ETA switching to Gatwick at the end of the month. Lloyd Bell, yes indeed, we will no longer see them here at Heathrow. Uh, Digital David, LS217 took off from Leeds for Lanzarote but diverted to Manchester after a bird strike. Might have seen a little read of that, but you know, it's not uncommon, you know, um, for, uh, for aircraft to, uh, to divert or, um, It, it happens, doesn't it? It's a clip wing, triple seven, two hundred. She ain't got no winglets. Bosh. Wow. Ash Morrison, Jilly, did you see any bin chickens in Sydney? Flipping it, did we?
that was funny when we caught when we first first caught eyes on them, silly, wasn't it? We turned up at that that little shopping mall. What's that? Look at that! Look at him with his big feet. And then it was like one of them on their own walking around this big giant chess board, uh, outside chess board. And then we looked to our left, and all the all his mates came running over. Didn't they? It was great, wasn't it? And there were some very loud. Were they macaws up in the trees? Were they macaws? Yeah. Flying into London on a BA jet, you'll uh, you'll notice that uh, the um, they do not use the reverses 99.9% .9 of the time. You see a hundred BA jets, big ones that is, uh, landing. Um, well, actually, I, I I I no, all jets. I've we've seen uh, BA jets. Uh, mainly uh, the uh, certainly the 380s generally don't tend to use uh, reverse thrusters here at Heathrow but they do overseas um, seen it we've seen it at San Fran New York you know not sorry San Fran but New York um, and Miami as well isn't it uh, where they use uh, a, a, I don't know if it's maybe regulation or something like that but they certainly look after their aircraft back here at Heathrow um, but you will from time to time see an aircraft um, or a pilot uh, open it up. 7-6, isn't it? Of course, we only saw one of those in, in Sydney, didn't we? With the uh, Sydney freighter. That was it. Okay, Suffer 63. Jerry, are you totally sure that Air Malta are ceasing all operations? Well, it's Malta. It's not Air Malta, is it? It's Malta. Um, wasn't it, Jilly? Is it Air Malta? Okay, because there's two different uh, operators, isn't there? Because he's not sure. He's uh, Suffer 63 saying that he's not seen anything about it. Andrew Hickingbottom. I went to Manly Harbour. So did we in the harbour boat when I went there. Yes. That's crazy, isn't it? You know, of all the um... yeah, all Air Malta to close in March, uh, a new airline to replace it. Apparently, KM Malta Airlines apparently will be uh, replacing them. I uh, don't know why that is, but um, uh, that's it apparently um, so whether that air, that whether they are going to acquire those aircraft I'm not sure might be just a change of management a bit like what happened with ETA and Al Alitalia isn't it Tony Austin missing the punk pigeons already uh, Raptor X that BA320 in from Jersey and Air India 787 from Mumbai about to join the back of the queue Aidan Campbell thank you Yin Cafe supporter good day to you uh, yeah, keep me posted and everybody on here posted with aircraft that are on approach. 
Um, it doesn't matter whether they are on finals, whether they are 20 miles away or uh, crossing the channel or whatever. But anyway, we have got the um, we have got the uh, last uh, the the pilot flying the last air Malta operation into London Heathrow, who's contacted us, and um, it looks like we're going to get it. Is it Jilly? Fly SSC. We're just finding that out now. Always oh, saying I'll have to look it up. I'd love to be on that flight SSC. Oh, got a 380 in the um, that's in the um, the testing bay, isn't it? See the 380 in the testing bay there. How about you, choo choo? First of March. First of March. Thirty-first of March. I mean. Oh, this is the Malta one, isn't it? A.M. A.M. Yeah, Jilly. Oh, really? Arrives at seven thirty. Ooh, that's that's two weeks away, isn't it? Yeah, so that 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 could potentially be quite pro problematic in terms of the departure. But it'd be great if he's going out of two seven right. Well, if everything, if all the stars align, it might work. It might not. I don't know. Peter Groves or Groves, sorry, Ridge's breakfast is awesome. Unbelievable! Yeah, I was um, see the big droopy undercarriage on the triple seven. Yeah, I, honestly, man, I've got to be honest with you. Of all the hotels I've travelled around the world, the Ridges Hotel rules completely. Any other hotel needs to take some. Um, uh, a, a, a leaf out of their book literally or uh, or out of their cookbook at least and um, and I mean honestly I'm hungry now thinking about it um, corn fritters corn fritters man didn't have corn fritters and since I was a kid my mum used to make lovely corn fritters um, triple seven Lenny will there be an Easter Sunday show yes of course there will we wouldn't leave you guys in the lurch on a, regardless of on a Sunday, whatever. It's not, we're, we're gonna be there. Uh, Hayabusa Nutter. Uh, contact at bigjet.tv, Hayabusa. Contact at bigjet.tv if you wanna send any emails. Uh, told my sister to stay there before she flies out of Sydney for her honeymoon in August, Sarah Leckie saying, yeah. Uh, it was Sarah that we met at Haas, wasn't it? With her sister or? friend yeah with her sister that was it yeah Lloyd Bell sunset on 31st will be 734 departure is 830 okay so it'll be a an hour after sunset okay so Jill is just telling me that apparently they will be going out of 27 right on the 30th um, uh, obviously if they're not on zero nines it depends on wind uh, well on operations really but with any luck uh, we might get that taxiing out for its last ever flight in the uh, well with air with air Malta is it or air or it's just Malta Yes, indeed, indeed. Yep, 
Ross Watts, A380 on finals, question mark. Michael White, are you at Heathrow next Wednesday? I'm flying out on the slinger. Well, Michael, email us, contact at bigjet.tv. Fly SSC1, yes. Air bin chicken, Avro triples have air bin chickens, brilliant. Uh, abandoned UK A380 from Miami. Ooh. Mark B, don't start me on bubble and squeak. Oh, look at that, look at that. Oh, wow, look at that. Oh, yeah, no, that's even better. Yeah, you can't make bubble and squeak afresh. You have to have bubble and squeak from leftovers from the Sunday lunch. Yeah, from the Sunday lunch. That's the only way to make bubble and squeak. Don't try and make it from fresh vegetables and all that kind of malarkey. Anyway, whatever. Sorry, sorry. I will stop um, talking about stuff like that. I apologise. Virgin 330, 300 from Boston, five minutes out, Aidan Campbell, Steve Batty, Sarah Louise, Claire Bear, Peter Room, Sarah Louise, life with Dave. When the planes land, are they told where to turn off or do they still turn off the runway at the same point? Uh, life with Dave, that is basically something that they will, unless, Unless air traffic control have uh, specifically asked them to vacate the runway as soon as possible because of separation or whatever, these guys will have already preset their um, their exit point on the um, on 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 the on the flight management system. In fact, sometimes you have what's known as a break to vacate, uh, which the aircraft itself, with its very clever computer systems, will know which exit. Uh, via GPS and all that kind of stuff uh, that the aircraft wants, so it will it will break um, effi efficiently enough to, to to vacate at a specific point on the runway. This is interesting. Is this a Gulf Stream of some description coming out here? Private jet. Oh, nice Max, like it. Look how stubby it looks, man, that undercarriage. But it looks great, doesn't it? Iceland Air, nice. I do like that new Iceland Air livery, man. I've got to be honest. I'm a big fan of it, especially as it's, it's, they've got different flavors and varieties, haven't they? It's like, it's like looking at the ice lollies in a, um, in a cold cabinet, raspberry, Blueberry, uh, they got lime. Um. <laughs> Triple seven Lenny, big shout out to Panasonic VX1. Man, is that camera a workhorse? It is not just the cam, but the toggle button as well, the zoom button. Wow, gets a big workout twice a week. Um, and with, you know, I mean, obviously I've, you know, she's got a little raincoat, um, which, which protects her as best it, we can. CPR. Jordan Charlie Stan, Sten and the non-plastic generation. <laughs> yeah. Might as well leave it up, Jelly, because it's, it's doing the rounds, isn't it? So whatever. Life with Dave, an absolute pleasure. Life with Dave, when I mention that, it might be worth Googling it because I do get things wrong uh, quite a lot. Um, the break to vacate thing is something that I've learned over the years, both from pilots and also um, through doing a little bit of research. But yeah, in general, 
um, the uh, the exit point of the runway will always be mainly be predetermined. You know, uh, a, 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 a 380 pilot, for example, uh, will say to the tower, uh, we're heavy, we're going to need the full runway, so just make sure that you keep people behind us well separated. Hey, thank you all. Wow, this is a little bit, uh, this guy needs to hurry up. Get off the runway, son. Get off the runway. Get off the runway. Oh, he's just done it. He's just off, is he? Oh, that was close, mate. Not a great deal of separation there. Look, see the uh, 320 just turning off the runway there. G550 Michael McEwen and Lloyd Bell, uh, N909 AD Gulfstream 5. So that's either one of the um, Saudi or um, Qatarians or um, whoever, I'd imagine. Might be, uh, might be, um, what's his name, Jilly? Smeddy Dave? Is it? Smelly John, yeah. <laughs> Lloyd Bell, Nick Gray, Avro Arrow. Yeah, totally bonzer uh, breakfast. Absolutely first class, mate. CEO. Uh, Jane Mank, uh, Ice and there have got about three liveries on the go, haven't they? Wow, well, I think uh, one, two, three, at least four. How many different? Google it. Uh, Caro, a uh, Kero burner, a uh, Caro burner. I think that's kerosene burner. Uh, thanks for vid visiting us down under. Hope you both had a comfortable trip home. Very comfortable indeed. There we go, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so that's interesting. So, so yeah, the controllers will leave it to the discretion of the pilots as to which exit they vacate. Um, but, you know, a, a being, being a, 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 a made aware um, early doors, you know, by a pilot, you know, we're heavy, we're going to need an exit. La di da di da, um, or the, um, or maybe this KLM pilot is being told, uh, can you exit as soon as possible? You've got a big lump behind you. Look at this lovely old. Uh, what's that? A 700. It's an old uh, 700. They'd be normally using their um, their E2 jets, wouldn't they? Oh, fast as funk is on chat. Okay, uh, need to speak to you, possibly, sir. Um, we will. We got his details and all that, and we jillies, and, and we got him on WhatsApp and all that. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we've got a project coming up. We might. Uh, yeah, we might be. We might be needing a a, a POV cameraman. Or camera person um, so uh, just um, we, we we'll let you know on that one yeah um, but uh, yeah 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 we got a possible um, a, a, a project coming up which is quite exciting yeah 
Yeah, listen to this. Nice. Look at the ailerons, man. Look at the outboard ailerons, man. If you can look at that, look at that. Oh, no, truck it. Well timed, fellas, well timed. <laughs> Algernon Sour Gravy. Uh, I think you might have won there because we did it in under 30 minutes, didn't we, Jilly? All the horses were, um, were rounded up. Round up and Venice and hope on the plane. Do -do -do. Turn on the TV, shut out the lights, Roy Rogers is riding tonight. Oh, there's me trapping me things in <laughs> Tony McCall would be awesome to get a Zoom remote for the VX1 would be a game changer. A Zoom remote? Why would you need that when I've already got my finger? I don't quite understand that, you know. Um, why would you want a Zoom remote? I want to control everything. I don't want... I don't know. Maybe I've got the wrong end of the stick there. Wrong end of the Zoom stick. Kieran, I love flying, but when going from T5, there's something really disappointing knowing that the active runway is 27 right and you have a 20 minute taxi ahead rather than to runway 09. Yeah, that, that's the whole thing, you know, when, what we were talking about earlier with this, this guy who's, uh, you know, who worked for the agency and asking me about, you know, um, about delays and stuff like that. I, I, like I said to him, if you've got a flight going out at 2.20, you've got a flight going out at 2.20, chances are you're not going to go out, you're not going to be flying any time sooner than, uh, than 3 o'clock, really, or maybe even a little bit earlier. But, you know, you've got so many different uh, factors um, involved in flying out of an airport. You know, uh, your ETD is always going to be, you can always add on at least 20 to 30 minutes. Um, you know, when you're, when you're, you've, I don't know, I don't think I've ever been sat on an aircraft um, at the gate before they close the doors and it's not been past the, uh, the estimated departure time. Usually, it's at least, uh, you can add on 20 to 30 minutes on top of your ETD, and even then, uh, you're doing well. Horatio McSherry, have to admit, I have a soft spot for the 737s with the big blended wingtip. I do as well. Uh, I've got a soft spot for all the 737s. I love them. And you know what I think it is? I, 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 think, I think some people even uh, unknowingly have a passion for the 737, especially people from my era, you know, the old timers, um, uh, because it's got a, 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 the front end of an aircraft that, 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 that basically started the jet era off, the 707. You know, um, I mean, I know the Comet was there first, but you know, in terms of the first sort of like multi, um, you know, um, um, well, let's just say the 707. But um, yeah, the 727, the 707, both the same uh, design of front end on it. And that kind of uh, may be partially the reason why we do have a soft spot for the old 737. Turn on the TV, shut out the light. Wow. That's a United jet with, I think they're GEs, aren't they? Is that 200 with GEs? Which I have to say is quite rare. Normally they're Pratt & Whitney. Nice. 
loaded it up. Steve Batty and the 717 nose reminds you of a DC-8. Yeah, kind of, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 777 Lenny flew on a brand new 737 Max 8. It was just perfect. Well, I've flown with Iceland Air on the Max on the Max 9 uh, from Keflavik to, or Reykjavik to um, to Seattle, wasn't it, Jilly? And um, I had a great flight. Even saw the Northern Lights. And you know what? It was lovely because the uh, the stewardess came and tapped me on the shoulder. She said, uh, "Are you awake? Are you awake? You did ask me." Uh, to awake to wake you up if the northern lights they're over there and I, we all went over on the right hand side of the plane in the pilot was hey hey what are you doing <laughs> no, so, we're going on the right hold on a minute it was, yeah. trev i love flying the 737 in the sim <laughs> yeah we're planning something folks with captain chris you know captain chris very famous guy uh, flies with virgin atlantic um big on the old thanks for that mate big on the old um, Instagram front as well but we're not sort of like we're, we're diverting away deviating away from that although a lot of people know him from Instagram um, but Captain Chris uh, we are we're gonna possibly doing some simulator flying uh, and when we when I say simulator flying we're talking about a legit simulator as well full motion um, and um, we're um i'm hoping to go up there to do a recce number two um because we've already been up there before you might um, you might have heard me talking about it some time ago but uh, but yeah that's going to be a great day um and that's uh, something that we need to plan because it's going to be a post production piece folks it's going to be an upload it's not going to be uh, live uh, obviously the reason being is because uh, and we will premiere it live we will premiere the edited um, so there's chat so you guys can watch it and chat on it life with Dave thanks to the fellow members and Jerry for the info on my question Wow look at that that's great feedback the info and help on this chat is amazing do you know that's the kind of thing I love to see uh, when somebody says that you know the, the 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 feedback's brilliant on here you know but it's great to uh to hear that uh, avro arrow uh, i was in a real simulator with zane dunning that was a great uh, and that was live as well um but um you know obviously the the biggest concern that people have when you're doing something live folks is that um you know, uh, 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 even the most qualified seasoned pilot in the world is is going to have criticism from other pilots. It's it's just going to happen. Oh, I don't do that. I don't retract that until this time. And then, oh, he was a bit early doing that one. He oh, you don't want to turn right like that. You want to turn right like this. You know, oh, the kind of thing. You know, this is just going to happen, isn't it? You know i'm better than him and all that kind of thing so the best thing to do is obviously put it out video it edit it hand that off to um to the to the relevant people who want to see it done right and then uh, upload it thankfully we didn't get any of that silly stuff from the piece that we did with zane dunning i think it's because he's such a great character wasn't he he was a great that was a great show with zane zaino Lenny, just a lot of combined experience on this show. That's brilliant, isn't it? Malay, what was that? Um... Ah, trucking. Wow. Yeah, and another 
bit of really uh, exciting news that we're going to be hopefully bringing you in the next couple of weeks, folks, as well. Well, I say exciting news, it's just something that, that it's just going to happen. And if it happens, trust me, you're going to love it. <laughs> Alan L woke this morning to find I've been gifted a membership. There we go. Big thanks to the gifties. 380 following this triple seven. Dave Carr, eat at 3193 out. Gonna get, you're going to get uh, criticism in any environment, aren't you? You know, oh, I wouldn't have stitched him up like that. I would have waited at least for 20 minutes before the, 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 the you know, the the, 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 the flesh has got time to do something or whatever. You know, oh, I wouldn't have cut his hair like that. No, no, no. You don't want to brush it before you do that. You want to put a bit of water on it first, and it's like. Oh, for crying out loud. Oh, I wouldn't film it like that. No, don't do that. Shut off. <laughs> it's always the keyboard warriors, isn't it? That could do better. They can always do better. Can't they? Let me just double check. Because um, uh, we do have to consider audio and things like that, don't we, Julie? Yeah. Okay. So this one's all right. Oh, really? Okay, okay. Well, you know what? Yeah, but you know what? That's fine. Yeah, 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 man. We need to do that. Uh, but yeah, but the good thing is, Jilly, that this battery's, uh, I can, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. No trucks, no trucks. Oh, there's a truck coming, you. But as you're, oh, is that a little bit of reverser. Let me just double check GP. Um, battery is still got t uh, still got about 30% on it. It's fine. Um, and this little fella down here is uh, is all right. Is all right. Steve Stibbons. I got woken this morning with my wife shouting upstairs, Jerry's chasing horses! <laughs> Come and look quickly! <laughs> He's come running down in his pyjamas, isn't he? <laughs> what, 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 what's going on? What's going on? Oh! Triple Seven Lenny's gifted a membership. Thank you, Triple Seven Lenny. Chris Gossman, uh, I work in cargo and it, and if the flights get charged with a delaying an ETD, it relates to the time the aircraft gets pushed off block, the time the aircraft gets pushed back. Okay, um, kind of kind of got that. Oh, say it about that. Kind of got that. That's a 380 that's just come out. Eater. Good looking jet. Yeah, fly SSC, um, you know, Heathrow, of course, is not the same anymore without the uh, 747s, the, 
so many of them we had as well wasn't it um, but uh, of course you know back in those days we still we had virgin 747s as well um, I'm, I'm led to believe that if 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 the virus you know of coronavirus all that malarkey um, hadn't have happened um, British Airways would have still had their 747s operational uh, up till about three weeks four weeks ago but I'm thinking that uh, based on um, the delays in aircraft um, production and deliveries uh, that they may have held on to them for, a, for a, uh, maybe a couple more years I don't know but anyway in Whiting tuning in from North Hertfordshire Dave Carr Butte trees in the paddock. <laughs> uh, Janos Hereb is a returning member. Welcome back, Janos. Or Janos, or whatever way I'm supposed to pronounce it. But a uh, very warm welcome back. And uh, Janos, um, you and all our new and existing premium members will be able to watch. Literally, when we finish here, we're going to open the floodgates for Sydney. Uh, Simon Bampkin is a brand new member. There's another premium member who's going to be able to watch all the Sydney shows. Uh, and that is part of our remit, folks. That's what we do uh, when we do a first class and super class show. One week later, we will release that footage for you guys. It's just the first class and super class members get to watch it exclusively live. Robert Mendez. Good day to you, Robert. So, okay. It's getting quite hot. Rich B. Good to see Big Jet TV back up base. Good to see you, Rich. Thank you. Iberia Neo. It's another place we've got to head back to, isn't it? Um, Madrid. Um, I think there's uh, what was it what was it read up the other day like five operators um, operating the 350 in Madrid but the reason why we haven't been in Madrid yet we need it to dry out because there's a position that we want to go to at Madrid but it's uh, it's it's not accept accessible in the um, in the wet because of the access uh, up the ramp it's a, it's a very muddy hill uh, Rafael Ramos Thank you very much indeed. Enjoyed your videos. Had to pinch myself to see Big Jet TV covering Aussie traffic. There we go. Wow, Greg Dillon, thank you. Sydney was fantastic, but Haas was just special. Wow, thank you, uh, Greg. And uh, to all people, we have we are re-uploading that with revised audio on it. Loud audio. New improved version of Haas, where you really will uh, not have to turn your um, volume up to uh, 11. Gary D. Delta 767 from Atlanta, four minutes. With what? Sorry, Julie. Changi, yes. Well, I think that was possibly because we didn't see that amazing Gardens of Babylon, did we? Um, yeah. Jill Blakeney, get in there. Andy Joy, Avro Arrows. Spring arrived officially here yesterday. Uh, so naturally it arrived, it snowed overnight for Avro Arrow. Yeah, sure. Springs next, first day of springs next week, isn't it? But don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Horatio McSherry just hit two years as a first class member and can say Sydney instantly up there with Anchorage as best trips on Big Jet TV. There we go. See now this traffic that's behind me that I'm not showing at the moment, he will have been asked to slow 
um, to reduce speed and he would have put this Malaysian jet uh, over the active um, but obviously caution traffic I don't know if um, this guy's getting that warning caution traffic um, because there's something on to wrong way 8020 is it French one is it French L'avion. Well, I expect to see the sea. Well, you can, madam. It's over there between the land and the sky. What? <laughs> Brilliant. Nick's carnival videos. Weekend of the 40th. Weekend of the 40th, eh? Is he on another planet? Michael McEwen, Malaysian livery looks good on a 350. Yeah, the, uh, the, the, the other one looks especially good, doesn't it? Sorry about that. Oh, a bit of a bouncer there, man. Uh, John Thackeray, uh, Jerry, any idea why the 380s usually only use the inboard reverses upon landing? Uh, John, great question. Something that we've discussed many, 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 many times. The A380 is actually only equipped with inboard reverses. It does not have outboard reverses. Um, it was a bit of an old wives' tale back in the day um, that I actually uh, uh, um, sort of like got um, got suckered into uh, about it. A nice M64. Here we go. Carry that on in a second. Stand by. Ah, uh, truck. Yeah, so the A380, when they built the A380, the, uh, the airframers, Airbus, were so confident of its, sh of its sheer stopping power because it's got 16 of its huge 20-wheel system main gear. Uh, 16 of the wheels are braking wheels. Now, one wheel breaks, that is equates to about the stopping power of two or three um, um, car brakes. Uh, because on each hub assembly, on each braking assembly, on each wheel, there are usually between four to six discs, uh, along with their um, uh, pneumatic or uh, hydraulically powered uh, pistons. Uh, so if you can imagine, the stopping power of an A380, when they approached the, the customers, they said, oh, we don't have any in inboard reverses, by the way. And the customers were like, ooh, we don't like that. And they were like, yeah, no, no, trust us. And they were like, no, 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 no. We've got to have some kind of a backup, haven't we? So they reached uh, an agreement to have two reverses. They definitely didn't need four. Clipper 707, thank you. Oz was indeed awesome.
Gary D United 767 from Chicago three minutes out thank you uh, Jane Reeve what's top of your wish list of locations you've not been to well uh, it's, it doesn't exist anymore but Kai Tak would have been my um, one that I would have loved to have been there back in the day uh, sitting up on top of that hill 747 CCA 707s even Concord flew didn't Concord fly to Kai Tak did it at one point it did I think so Rab that's very true yeah the famous old Kai Tak approach uh, one that I will be attempting ladies and gentlemen in the simulator we're going to be going through a number of different simulations and scenarios with Captain Chris um, and that hopefully we'll we'll be filming that I think in April was it April or May April yeah next month uh, hopefully it'll all it, it, it does there's that yeah there, there there is a um there is a sort of like you know uh, a, a question over it just in terms of chris's availability because uh, that's obviously he's flying with virgin atlantic so that obviously takes preference and priority um if he's available then we're going to do it andrew hickenbottom have you ever done washington, washington dc uh, the approach there looks pretty hairy okay um well isn't there someone that we used to uh isn't it one of our uh one of our members so Kristen, yeah Kristen, that's it yeah wow jelly can you turn your headset down or is that just me you living whatever you're doing there it sounds like you're whipping the headset Chris Mason, Sydney was absolutely brilliant. Thank you for all your hard work. Thank you, Chris, for uh, tuning in. Aaron Thomas, I was born just after Kai Tak closed. Well, this is the old 767 inbound, and here we go. Oh, sorry. About that. Uh, Scott Whittam, um, no, haven't decided against the higher platform. We are just waiting to uh, all arrange for some tie downs uh, in the paddock here. Um, because uh, just from a health and safety standpoint, um, I would rather have um, something to anchor the van down to rather than and, and standing on that high platform because obviously if you can appreciate the higher you go if you're already on a high standing vehicle with suspension uh, when you move around the, the vehicle tends to rock uh, not that it's in any way dangerous uh, but you just for, for, for the sake of being safety conscious and um and the fact that we are very safety conscious you know um we have to be uh, 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 uh and th th there's there's no harm in doing that um that's why there is a uh, we're not using it at the moment it's in the van all the extra platforms they're all in the van the sides and everything they're all there but um it's just uh you need to be obviously conscious of your safety you don't want um people sort of like taking photographs going oh look at him up there oh it's dangerous and all that kind of thing um like people do oh i'm gonna send something to somebody because i'm really you know <laughs> but scott thank you yeah we're we're gonna carry on with that especially in the summer months um today's been literally the first time we've been able to get the van into the paddock even that was a bit of a uh, well um, driving in it was uh, was a bit of an exercise Joanna B 
Yeah, Joanna, that's, uh, that Concorde's been there for many, many years. It's just uh, come back from restoration. I think they've given her a fresh lick of paint, maybe. Um, and it may be that that paint is a little bit more robust uh, than the previous coating. Um, I'm not sure how they did it or who did it or what. You know, I don't think, I don't, don't know if it was a, a specialist uh, paint uh, uh, aircraft livery company uh, or what. Oh, Jeremy Smith, Air France and BA Concorde flew into Kai Tak. Wow. Imagine seeing Concorde on that tight turn. Um, she was a beautiful aeroplane in any guise, in any sort of like application. Um, but our one at Heathrow does need a new lick of paint. Look at that up against the, uh, against um, that triple seven. Looking quite faded there, the old girl. Nice, 767. Another one with the big, huge 11 foot winglet, folks. 11 feet. touch it like that is it a tapping flapping sound why do I need that row here I'm quite happy with the setup that I've got. <laughs> oh, I'll move it a little bit, Jilly. I'll move it a little bit. See if that makes any, um, if that makes any difference. I don't know, I've just uh, repositioned the microphone. Great to see the flare from here, man. So yeah, that's that truck there that you're seeing there, folks. The platform that I've got, as you can see, um, this platform here, uh, I've got poles that reach up another uh, two or three meters. Uh, so these 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 um, these vertical poles they come out. This then forms the uh, the platform uh, base. And then we've got another set of these rails going up to the top. I've, I've shown you it before. Uh, you might have seen it, I don't know, but uh, it's... Um, Karina, going to need a, la a, a nap later. Uh, Carol Cupcake, Intrepid Muse Museum was amazing last October. Seen Concord where would have been great. Glad she is back now. Yeah, okay, there we go. Oh, that's the one at New York, right. Wally as a business do you have to yes indeed oh look at this lovely old area here too. nice yeah that's my favorite man that's my favorite listen to the downwash listen out for that wow bosh I might get a bit of a whip Carnival videos, Emirates and Qatar 380s just crossing the channel. Well, there's our closeout GP, yeah? What? What? No. No, 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 no. No, no, no. It's landed, mate. Flipping heck.
Oh. Mark Bailey wheelie it was, wasn't it? So we've got Qatar and Emirates 380s literally chasing each other into Heathrow. Uh, final closeout for the show today. Three of them. Raptrex Air India Triple Seven glitched on flight radar. Yeah, Jilly was like, "Let's go around, let's go around." I'm like, "Where, where, what, what?" Um, interesting. smells like for you for guys who first opened the plane door oh, it doesn't smell like anything it smells of a plane <laughs> it's not like you know everyone's farted together and you know they've left them yeah it's no uh, sort of like you know Oh, Jez White, 222 mile separation between Emirates and Qatar. There we go. Uh, Avro didn't get any views because we were flying mainly at night, weren't we? Um, on our uh, on our on our routes, on our on all our routes. Aidan Campbell, Qatar, 380, uh, 26 minutes away. Uh, Tim Johnson, uh, the diameter of those triple seven engines intake looks almost the same as the fuselage. Yeah, they're gnarly, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A flight SSC LL aircraft change. George American Triple Seven from Charlotte. Tony, uh, tuning in from Orlando. Thank you, Tony. Roxy Simmons off to Roswell tomorrow. Awesome. Aiden Campbell going to uh, track the Qatar 380 as that will land after Emirates. Matt Cat Lady, absolutely fantastic shows from Australia, thank you. Uh, Rohit, saw a bit of wildlife, mainly at the zoo, zoo, zoo. How about you, you, you? Bin chickens. Uh, that's about it, really. A few ants, some ants and flies. Aussie flies, Bzzz, mate. Bzzz. Steph, if you want to track my flight, I'm on BA five seven four two Lin eight, departing twelve forty Linate. Sorry. Where the hell's that?
Oh, is it? Okay. Claire Bear, I'd love to go to Roswell. Joanna B, we're going to be catching the last 380s. Uh, so about another 30 minutes, maybe. Seeing as we had a little 30-minute uh, delay earlier on. Danny Budgies, Andrew Hickenbottom. Oh, butterflies, Avro Arrow. Yeah, well, the butterflies were at, at Chengi. Uh, in, yeah, 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 which was uh, just amazing. The little butterfly hospital, wasn't it? Which was actually not... It shouldn't have been called a butterfly hospital. Should have been called... What are they... Um, uh, um, when babies are born. A maternity ward, that was it, yeah. Oh, Milan Linate, Steph, thank you. Oh, Andrew Hickingbottom, Dunny Budgies is slang for blowflies. <laughs> I can understand that. There's a slinger going out. Is that uh, the one we caught this morning? Going over the top before all the fracas happened. <laughs> Ellis Chernoff, A350-1000, almost the same size as 777-300ER, but the maximum takeoff weight of the 300 is still greater and the engine thrust of the 777-300 is also greater. Is it? That's interesting, Ellis. I was kind of led to believe that the, uh, that the Trent XWB has a, a close to 100,000 pounds of appliable thrust although saying that the GE115B yes is probably obviously a, a lot more powerful um, but uh, yeah MTOW for the uh, for the 777-300 by the sounds of it is uh, is indeed uh, greater than the A350-1000 um, but yeah I mean um, some aircraft have uh, better operational Sorry, sorry. Oh dear, is it? Oh my god. What is it? What, what they've shut all the shops? Oh my god. The slinger. Yeah, the, if, you, if you're talking about G9090 engine, that's around about 90,000 pounds of thrust. That's the. Um, uh, but obviously, they derate them as well a lot of the times i think the ge nx um sorry the ge 9x is going to be the most powerful although it's said that the ultra fan is going to be the most powerful but the um the ge 9 uh, the ge 90 uh the 115b is obviously 115,000 pounds of available thrust um some 777 300s operate them the um i think the um the 777 200 freighters all operate g9115s uh now we might get a funky shot here stand by for funk you've got the funk we've got the funk yeah she's got the funk yeah oh look at this little fella coming in there. This is an Embraer uh, E2 jet. Look at that. It's just an, a great looking aeroplane, isn't it? Fantastic wing, all carbon, all new. 
fully carbon wing. That's this Helvetic. Nice. Yeah, it's Helvetic, yeah. your favourite Aussie food delicacy, Ash Morrison? Uh, yeah, McDonald's cheese toasties. Tell you what, I, have, I, I, do, I do have a serious, you know, I think, I think the UK arm um, of, of, of uh, you know, the, uh, McDonald's over here, we've got the Hawaiian burgers, you've got the this, that and the others. They really should do the Aussie toasties, man, because I tell you, they are lovely. Oh, I want one now. You know, you can have it in different guises as well. You know, I, I didn't have the bacon in mine. I just had the cheese and the barbecue sauce. Oh, God, it was like a starving. Edinburgh. Triple seven Lenny, sorry about that. <laughs> I've just planted that new uh, earworm in his head. Sukauta's daughter is currently in Vietnam. No, I don't like flibbly bits, bouncy bits. Nothing worse. Oh, was it? Okay, not with like elastic bands sticking out of it. Hello, little mate, little fly there. Roxy Simmons, I was responsible for uh, for a sudden surge in the per purchase of cheese. Um, yeah, <laughs> brilliant man. Scott Whittam, I come for the planes and stay for the karaoke. Nicely, sort of like, you know, delayed flare there. Very smooth indeed, man. That's a, that's a seasoned pilot right there, I'm sure. In my son, Gary Sibthorpe. Steve Stibbons. This is Floofage. Let's have a look on flight radar and see where these 380s are right now. Still using the holds ever so slightly. Oh, here they come. So the first 380 uh, is Emirates EK1 just coming to uh, towards Brentford and right behind him 
just south of Chelmsford is the Qatar QR3 from Doha. Oh, look at this big old lad. I wasn't worried, I just, I'll be honest with you, I think they film, I don't know if you heard me earlier, Julie, you know when we were, when we came out from baggage, yeah, and we were going through customs, there was that, they sent us through that, that, that little wooden thing, you know, I think behind that is where they film it, yeah, uh, because it was quite sparse where we went through, so I think it's uh, a separate, um, area where they film um, yeah 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 new season filming um, but uh, I think they pick on I think they pick on specific uh, uh, well I don't know if they pick on specific people but um, it all depends on uh, you know yeah they got to make it dramatic of course they have you know like you know like some people when they come off a plane they look a little bit dodgy because they're either very extremely tired uh, they've had a bit to drink or uh, or whatever it might be or uh, people have not declared food they're really uh, tight on that one I've got to be honest with you um, again coming back early morning from um, from overseas at Heathrow absolutely no one there at customs at the nothing at the declare gates no one there at all um, and just herds and herds and herds of foreigners walking through with all their suitcases probably rammed full of food and stuff that they shouldn't be bringing in I'm not you know I'm not tarring everyone with the same brush but you know it's it, I'm obviously there must be uh, there must be you know a slight you know it must be a problem not a problem but I don't, I don't know what I, I don't know what it is with with um, Heathrow's um, uh, 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 security team. Maybe it's just because I'm a Londoner that I love London. Still. Nah. Sorry. Maybe it's just because they haven't got the staff, or maybe it's just because they just um, I don't know. Whatever. But it just seems that you know. Uh, I mean, they do have signs. You know declare it or um or, or or you could face you know fines or whatever blah blah they generally tend to say that on the plane but a lot of people don't speak english do they so they don't understand wait flat the runways at Heathrow are yeah I mean um, for there's a lot of runways out there that have humps in them and uh, all sorts of uh, different undulations isn't it but yeah Heathrow does generally uh, have very flat runways Yeah, we got through. Well, we did. What happened was, because 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 you don't want to, you don't want to sort of like you know um, get pulled up. I've seen it so many times where the bloke says, you know, well you had your chance, mate. You ticked no here, and you clearly have got this on. And I was like, you know, have you got any goods uh, related to business and all that? You know, like all, all that kind of thing. And. <laughs> And of course I thought, well, I've got my camera, goods or samples, yeah. And it's like, it's like that's for like traveling shoe salesmen and things like that, you know, people who are coming to sell their wares. Uh, but, uh, but no, I kind of ticked yes for, yeah, because I've got my camera, so that's business related. And then, uh, and then I was like, and Jilly was like, Man, you don't need to do that. I'm like, oh, okay. So I, I scrubbed it out and put, I, scr I scrubbed it out and put, um, and put no. And then, of course, when we got to the border, 
they said, uh, they said, uh, why have you scrubbed that? I said, well, it's because it's my camera. I'm not, I haven't got shoes in my case or anything like that. I'm not um, a travelling salesman uh, with a little, um, you know, lots of toothbrushes or something, you know. <laughs> yeah, misunderstood it. And they were like, go on, mate, straight out. I'm like, no, aren't you going to send me through the bit bob with a thing fong, you know? Yeah, I want to get on the telly. <laughs> Andrew Hickingbottom, I got I, I got done with the commercial samples thingy and nearly got deported from Denver Airport, bringing stuff to stuff to sell at a convention. Never done it since. You need the right visa to make money in the U.S. Well, of course you do. Of course you do. You can't just turn up and start making money, and you know you've got to have all your taxes in place and all that kind of thing. Yeah, you can't be doing that these days. You know, they'll have you. They'll have you, son. Yeah. We'd already done all the visa stuff long before we went out there. Um, so, and it was a it was a business visa as well, wasn't it, Julie? Business. Now this is a uh, oh nice three thirty nine hundred um, uh, uh, neo the neo with the Trek seven thousand. Look at the wind there. Look at the wind there. That is compared to a 313 CEO. Stunning aeroplane, man. Oh, we've got a big vortex. Might get a whip. Might get a vortex whip. Stand by. Listen. Listen. If you can imagine folks you know imagine the uh, wake of a boat that you see and you know uh, that wake if a if a boat goes through a lake and it's 400 500 yards wide when that boat goes through the lake uh, there's a wake behind it always behind a boat regardless of its size uh, so if you can imagine you're standing at the uh, standing at the edge of the lake and you um, and you see that boat go by, maybe a few minutes later or however long, the wake will reach the banks where you are. And that will lap up against the side of the banks and you'll hear that lovely sound of the water lapping up against the side of the, side of the bank. What you get here with the wing creating, creating a wake, literally, um, you, will, you will sometimes, as that wake descends, you will hear the whip and the crack of, of, of the wake, it mainly comes off aircraft that don't have winglets, although that 330 then, it's got beautiful winglets on it, but uh, create quite a bit of turbulent whip crack behind it. QR3, five minutes out, Aidan Campbell, thank you. Oh, Gary Sibthorpe, why would you take washing powder with you? That's, why would you take washing powder on holiday, especially nowadays? Four engine jet, four engine jet overhead, uh, I'm going to guess it's either a Lufty 747 or a 346 or something like that. Um, maybe it's a 747 freighter. It's a Lufty 343. There we go. Look at that, folks. That's rare as rocket horse poo seeing something like that now, nowadays. A 340-300 with Lufthansa. You know, I hold Lufthansa in high regard because they really did think about it, didn't they? Before, before just writing off all their jets and getting rid of them. 
uh, likes other companies did. These guys thought, hold on a minute, let's not be too hasty here. Let's think about, you know, what's going to happen because the, um, you know, the, 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 the pandemic will pass. It will, you know, at some point, it may be sooner rather than later. And this is, this is going to possibly result in delays in aircraft manufacturing and delivery, raw materials. Uh, it was kind of happening before the pandemic anyway. Um, but obviously Lufthansa, very clever, stood back and said, right, well, let's hold on to our aircraft. Uh, you know, whilst everyone else is panicking, you know, offloading their 380s and 747s, let's just hold on for a while and see how things pan out. Um, and boy, oh boy, did they do the right thing, holding on to their, uh, to their aeroplanes. And I, I think that um, Lufthansa, I think I'm right in saying this, as uh, globally, as the, as the most operational aircraft, um, fleet aircraft around the world, any, you know, um, in terms of their size. And, uh, you know, now they've got the best of, well, you know, they've got, they've got, they don't need to borrow aircraft, lease aircraft. They've got all their old 380s, 346s, um, 747s, A340 300s, you know, A330s, 78s, 350s. You know, oh yeah, that um, definitely had a bit of a repeat, that curry on the way out, didn't it? Kev Parker stood in the, stuffed to declare, per, was, uh, I took a friend some sweets, fruit, polos, 45 minutes later, the guy just went, oh, you didn't need to declare those, <laughs> yes. Well, you know, 45 minutes later, so, okay, so, the last thing you want to do is get is, is get pulled over, isn't it? Yeah! Big blast from the engines there, man. Funky shot off the uh, starboard wing there. And we all know the sequence. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Sandy Hubby, what a shot. Emre Unlo, big girl indeed. HCC awesome sight, Stephen Luscombe, Hamad Khan, Mark Witschak, John H. The sound, it was good, wasn't it? Just the, just as they, you know, um, the auto systems, well, uh, you know, the pilot, the flying pilot will have the throttles, the thrust levers in his or her hands, you know, you need a to show the ones you care for um, but no it's uh, and, 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 and they will be wanting to maintain that um, oh this is the are we going to get the sequence or is his gear down gear is coming down already um, yeah so the flying pilot will be manually flying this aeroplane folks uh, autopilot will just about be switched off now Bloop, bloop, bloop. Who wanted an American trip? Chuck it. Flip it, eh? Yeah, next time it's definitely going to be the uh, high platform. We'll get a high platform on the go, folks. Uh, don't you worry about it. 
conditions are, are favourable now. Um, although it's still pretty wet, the run into the uh, into the field. So it's not, you can't. It's not like you can drive in nice and slowly. You have to give it a full beans uh, to get across the mud swampy area. Last one of the day, folks. Scott Hetherington, yes, you can use that app um, when you sing. <laughs> Could do anything with it. Chrissy, thanks. Nick Rowe, Jerry has a nice singing voice. Yeah, no. Mate, you're gonna ruin the shot right here, son. Get out of it. Ah. Oh. Right, that's it. Next time, next time, it, the platform's going up, folks. Um. I can actually show them, can't I, Julie? You need to show that you're sincere. Um, right, I'm going to um, just quickly show them. Right, and we're going to do this next time, folks. Um, no doubt about it. Ain't no doubt about it. We're going to do. Oh, my nut. That's good, blimey, it's a bleeding miracle. It's a minor miracle, I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, we had fun. Um, right, there we go, done. Right, folks, thank you so much. It's been great uh, having your company once again. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Jilly, as always. For keeping uh, for keeping it keeping me on the short and narrow, um, and thanks for all your comments, folks. It's been fantastic. I'll oh, just get this triple set. Why not? Can't not film it, can you? Yeah. Oh. Oh, okay, we've got an Etihad 380 just come out of the Lambourne. Stand by, folks. Um, I'm, I'm, I think I might have to do some kind of a change here, Jilly. Stand by. Uh, because I, don't, I'm not, I wouldn't trust that battery. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, I've got one left on the battery, so... Uh... Oh, I think I might... If I switch this mic out, at least then we're... Oh, I'm, yeah, 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 I'm very careful with the whole uh, sort of like, you know, procedures that I have are always the, the good thing to do is when you get into a procedure. Um, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Um, stand by, let me just pull that mic out of there, put that one in there. God bless you, blimey, all right in, all that malarkey. <laughs> UK Red, yeah. A special thanks to the uh, to the horses. <laughs> the ones you can't get Oh, everything's behaved itself today, isn't it? No, 
no, no, no. I've changed the mic out. Hold on. Oh, for crying out loud, mate. Really? Oh, that's because this thing has decided to switch itself. There we go, there we go, that's maximum now. Check it, Jilly, check it. No, just check it, just check it, chill, chill. Okay, all right, all right, all right. There we go. Yeah. That mic's got a bleeding mind of its own, I'm telling you. Right, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're waiting around for the Etihad 380, folks. Andre Yu. Is it Andrao Yu? Andrao Yu. Tiger 74. Thanks, everybody. Um, we're just going to hang for the Etihad 380. Let's just have a... Let's just have a look and see where she's at. Okay, looks like she's finally making her way in now. Um, she's not gone. She's not gone into any hold, has she? She's coming straight in. Okay, I thought you said she was uh, in Lambourne. Okay, doing the Lambourne walk. Oi! Current speed 194 knots, 4,300 feet for EY19. Just about to turn onto the final approach. Calling up the tower, uh, fully established, 10 miles. Tower will um, confirm that. Uh, continue approach. That'll be it, continue approach. Uh, they may be asked speed up or slow down, uh, depending on how the control tower want them to, uh, the controllers want them to uh, control their approach. Uh, looks like there's everything good at the moment. Minimal traffic, continue that descent through now. Uh, 4,000 feet, 187 knots. They'll continue that around that speed uh, and then just slowly uh, now they'll be going flaps three, uh, flaps two, flaps three, and then full. And the 380 flaps are very, very, they take ages to extend. And uh, their first element of their extension, that is, the flaps one, is always like a big goes on forever and then if you know if you're aware uh, uh, of the of the sequence of the extending undercarriage you feel it if you're over the wing you feel the uh, the wing gear coming out first uh, and then you feel the doors shut and then you feel the body gear start to extend as well and then you hear the body gear doors shut so there is that whole sequence uh, the uh, the body the, the the main the wing gear will will fold out in a traditional sort of style whereas the back gear the the body gear will slide out um forwards i think it is i think it's forwards yes i think so um or is it back and down i'm not sure um we'll have to see that played it out God knows how many times on the show. Uh, she is just behind this jet here. Should start to see her um, appear any moment now. And there she is long range. So still gear coming down now. There's the wing gear. Body gear is just um, 
completed its sequence now. Uh, flaps are full. I'd imagine so. She's probably quite a heavy aircraft, isn't she? So pilots now um, are uh, just awaiting the final instructions from the tower. London approach. Just deal with this first one. The first one is being given clearance around about now. BA whatever, clear land, 27 left. Winds are, hmm, what are we talking? Um, something like 150. Know what the winds are but anyway um, all calm in the tower now maybe slowing a little bit bit of a speed brake on the 380 just a slower maintain that separation it's a sort of like a graduated descent which, uh, which is all controlled by the speed, the flap settings, all that kind of thing. It's almost, you know, all the pilots are literally doing is, is monitoring everything in terms of its speed. Um, approach angle as well is obviously an altitude is uh, quite important to uh, those three elements need to be uh, continually monitored. The non-flying pilot, uh, when the aircraft calls out 2,500, that's your initial start of the, um, of the call outs from the automated onboard systems. And then it will um, do different sequences where you get the 1,000. And then uh, you'll get the aircraft calling out um, minimums which is the minimum height you need to be and see able to see the runway visually. Uh, when that is called, the non-flying pilot will generally call continue because um, the, uh, the flying pilot will be happy with his or her um, approach. So now she's out of autopilot and she's been flown manually, usually around about this point. Five hundred. I think calling out minimums around about now. Fifty, forty, thirty, twenty, retard, Bosch. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Time that well, didn't you, son? I've had enough of it. I'm, 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 honestly, next time, mate, we're getting the, we're getting the, uh, we're getting our thing on. Sod that. Thanks everybody, you have been great, it's been uh, fantastic being back in London with all our, uh, with our, all our regular crew but also great to see so many of the Aussies joining us early this morning. We'll do more early morning shows as the, as the days get longer and we'll obviously also do longer evening shows as well folks. Desperate to get that engine glow, man. Um, thanks, everybody. Look after yourselves. We'll see you on Sunday. Uh, oh, actually, no, we will see you before that. We'll probably see you on Friday. Um, and I'm going to be posting our approach into London Heathrow a little bit later on. So look out for that. Um, premium members, Aussie shows are going to be released literally within the next few hours. So look out for those if you're a premium member. Will they get a notification, Jilly? Okay, let's just get this last one. BA Jet, 350, the carbon plastic, fantastic.
Look after yourselves, folks. Be good, be happy, be safe. And we'll see you uh, next time, probably Friday. I think that's our next plan. Um, do something on Friday together. Take care, see you later, bye-bye. Okay, GP, you can...